Hi friends and welcome. In this passage, we'll learn that focus is something that can be developed rather than something that we simply have or we don't have. So the key is to approach tasks with a growth mindset and to make them feel more energizing and enjoyable. We can make studying or working more fun by doing it with friends or joining co-working groups and by framing tasks as adventures, quote-unquote, rather than chores. So to maintain focus, it's important to avoid distractions, find an inspiring atmosphere, prioritize rest, sleep, exercise, and nutrition, and also moderating caffeine intake. By getting these basics right and finding a balance between extremes, we can improve our ability to focus and be a lot more productive. If you've always struggled to stay focused while studying or working, then you're not alone. Studies show that about 49% of people feel like their attention span is shorter than it used to be, and 50% of, our, of us check our phones on average every 12 minutes. Our world is full of an increasing number of distractions, and especially it's getting harder and harder to focus. But there are some simple tips backed by a whole bunch of research that can help us improve our focus, which is what we are going to go through in this video. And thank you for joining me on this uh, quick presentation. And going forward, we're gonna talk about a five part framework that is going to help us stay focused while studying or working. Part one is mindset, number two is technique, part three is environment, and part four is the human factor. So now we have the outline, let us get started. When it comes to mindset around focusing is we need to get away from the idea that focus is something that you have or something that you do not have. Focus is absolutely something that you can develop. We need a growth mindset when it comes to focusing. We need to think of focus as something that can be learned rather than something that is innate to us. So the way I think about this is, do I struggle to focus when it comes to playing video games? Probably not. Do I struggle to focus when it comes to hanging out with my friends, watching Netflix or watching a good movie? If the movie is boring, then yes but otherwise probably not but on the other hand do i struggle to focus when it comes time to studying for an exam yes okay cool so what is going on there when i'm playing a video game and i'm having fun it is enjoyable it is energizing and so the mindset with which i approach things that i need to focus on with is how do i do it in a way that makes this task more energizing in other words, how do I make it fun? So with a lot of students and professionals that I've talked to, I see a kind of defeatist mentality that like, oh, if I just get through this, then suddenly I will accomplish my goals. A few years down the line, and then it will be all worth it. It's like this thing that Muhammad Ali famously once said, which is, quote unquote, I suffered every day in training for 10 years, but that is what it took to become a champion. And honestly, I do not really like that approach to life. Now, I'm nowhere near as successful as Muhammad Ali, so feel free to take this with a pinch of salt. But to me, suffering every day for 10 years to lift a trophy at the end, maybe is not worth it. Like even if it comes at the cost of lifting that trophy, I would rather feel as if I were making the most of my short time on this earth then think I must suffer and crawl through discipline and grit and white knuckle myself through the hard work to get to the reward on the other side. Because really, it is all about enjoying the journey. It's more about the journey before the destination. And so that is the mindset with which I try and approach all these focus questions where this is what my whole video today is about. There are a few things that I found helpful over the years. First, studying or concentrating becomes more fun if you do it with company. 
back when I was at the university, I set up this group or was part of the group where we would, we would all get together and we were all doing different uh, subjects, but we would all do studying together. So we would do 25, 30, 40 minutes and then chat for a few minutes or take a break. And then we would go back and start focusing and studying again. We would just repeat this process and that made studying so much more energizing and helped all of us focus because now we're doing it around other people. You do not necessarily need to do this alone. There's this other new concept of a Zoom co-working group like Wingspace or there's a few other groups that during lockdown especially I used to join quite a lot. And they have this writer's hour, which is a free thing. It's a free co-working session. It happens four or five times a day, starts 8 a.m. in the morning, different time zones, and you just hop on a Zoom call. There is like a few hundred people on there, and someone chats about a few minutes giving inspiration. And then you work for like 50 minutes and do a five-minute break and a wrap-up where people post in the chat what they did, what they got done, and there's something so nice and collaborative about this. And I myself used to run these kind of Zoom co-working sessions during the lockdown. I think another helping thing on the mindset front that I find helpful is to try and frame what I'm doing more as an adventure, less as a to-do list or on a chore on my list. Back in the day, I used to ask myself, what is the most important task for the day? And I took this from Ben Franklin's morning routine. Every morning, he would ask himself, what good shall I do today? And the guy is Jake and John that wrote the book, Make Time, which is a very good book called The Daily Highlight, where every day you ask yourself, what's today's highlight going to be? And it could be urgent or something that is satisfying or whatever else. And I was using The Daily Highlight framing for a while. But then I realized that I'm missing a trick there. And I started calling it my daily adventure. It's like, what is the adventure that I'm going on today? Like today, my adventure is to film this video or my actual adventure for today could also be to write an article, to write a book or whatever I decide to do. And so what is otherwise a case of sitting on a laptop hunched over with coffee in my hand going through a Google Doc to approve or reject suggestions or to complete something and do little tiny edits and any other to-do list that I have, you know, can be seen as a boring thing and that I would struggle to focus on. But if I frame it as an adventure, I'm going to the local co-working space, grabbing a coffee on the way, have my headphones on, create that atmosphere, and then make it feel more like an adventure. And, and the idea here is that there's a ton of evidence that suggests that our brain struggles to focus for long periods of time. Long is arbitrary, but like there are some studies that say 90 minutes is like the absolute max. But I find 25 minutes or 30 minutes to be good because that is enough to get a reasonable amount of work done, but short enough that breaks just feel like it is around the corner. And is, it is like one of those things that it creates a mini deadline. And deadlines are a great way to encourage action. When we have something where if we feel like we have a little bit of time pressure on a thing, it makes us perform a little better. If there is too much time pressure, on the other hand, it detracts from our performance. But if there is just enough and balanced, then it is like a good kind of a motivator. So for me these days, as I'm working on an article that I'm trying to publish, as I'm working on other video projects, whenever I am struggling to focus, I turn on the above techniques. And the way that I use that is by using a simple timer, which acts as an automatic time tracker. So I find it helpful for me to see how much time I have spent on doing a certain thing or a certain action, which is what I'm doing for my work, and then I take a break. Now, you don't necessarily need a fancy app. You can just use a simple timer, uh, set up a goal for 25, 30 minutes, or you can use an hourglass, but setting a timer is unreasonably effective. And then there's also this idea of task switching. Task switching is a bad idea. Like most people probably know, 
this at at this point that there are actually a bunch of studies that show that if you're trying to do some work and then you respond to a notification or if you're trying to do some work and then you answer an email then there's this attention residue that's left when you switch tasks and so that is again why the focus technique i mentioned earlier is good in terms of a technique because it just means that for those 25 minutes you are full on laser focused on just the one thing that you're doing and you're not getting distracted by notifications here and there so when i meet people and 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 this question comes around hey i'm struggling to focus and do you have any tips that how you do that and then i have the time to ask a few more follow up questions turns out that they always have the phone in front of them they're always checking notifications it does not feel as if you are wasting that much time but you are like oh i have to check this email anyways might as well check it now but by checking the email you're completely shooting yourself in the foot when it comes to your ability to focus now the next thing here is that when it comes to our environment we want to try our best to create an environment that can avoid distractions there are many studies that support this theory if you just have your phone on your desk that studies show that that reduces your ability to focus compared to if the phone was in a different room and there was this paper called brain drain the mere presence of one's own smartphone reduces available cognitive ability most of us when we're trying to focus or study have our phone in front of us you can do what i do try to put it face down you can do what a lot of other people do and have it face up and have all those notifications pinging straight at you and distracting you but the even better thing to do is try to have your phone in a different room for that time box the other thing about distractions is you know we have to learn to embrace welcoming distractions the there are some distractions that are bad like a random twitter notification or any other notification like an email but there are some distractions that are good a good distraction might be for example your kid coming and wanting to speak to you most parents that i know have given me regret that they as they have gone older they have spent too much time on their work and not enough time with their kids similarly a, a welcome distraction might be like for me when i was at my offices i always would keep my door propped open and then whenever a friend or a coworker would stop by i would invite them in make them a cup of coffee and we would have a bit of a chat yes it is a bit of a distraction to my work and a break but it is also a welcome distraction and to be honest I'm fond of the memories that random friends coming into the room and that turning into an interesting conversation or turning into a board game or turning into an enriching experience later on and I really cherish that. So sometimes distractions are a good thing and we need to remember that life is more than trying to focus and just trying to be productive. It's also about health and relationships An inspiring atmosphere is another way to just improve your ability to focus there are some studies that show that having green plants nearby or in your office or on your desk improves your creativity which is related to focus when the environment around you is inspiring you're more likely to focus the vibe should be good the design should be nice this is why people enjoy going to coffee shops where there is like a little bit of a bit of a hustle and a bustle because in my mind that's an inspiring atmosphere so a lot of this stuff around how to focus and how to study in all these tips in general personal development and what not i find it is a balance between two extremes yes it's nice to have an inspiring atmosphere but if you have a requirement for an inspiring atmosphere always you're going to get a lot less done for example if i'm one of those people unless i have my desk looking a certain way unless i have my latte and my coffee uh, in a certain way and, and and a green plant in my office i cannot concentrate i would rather treat that uh as a nice to have rather than an absolute requirement and now comes the human factor and this is the basic stuff rest sleep 
exercise, nutrition. I have spoken to so many people who have struggled to focus and the rest of their life is just not put together. Like they do not prioritize their sleep. They're out until 4 a.m. partying in the nighttime. They're like not taking care of their nutrition, eating fried food, ordering takeout, eating chips every single day, not taking the time to exercise. When you're destroying your body like that, it is easy enough to do, trust me, when you're young, because you will just recover from it. But And the body won't care, but it completely destroys your brain and your ability to focus as you start getting older. So I'm not going to labor on this point too much. There's tons and tons of information you can, found on, you can find on YouTube about effective strategies for sleep, rest, exercise, and effective nutrition. We're not going to work on that too much now. We're working on a video on effective sleep as we speak, and I'll be bringing that to you in, in, in the next few days. Uh, a discussion about ways to improve sleep and, and ability to increase focus. But one thing I do want to talk about is caffeine. Studies have shown that caffeine is a, is a good uh, element to add. And there's a balance there. There's benefits to caffeine. Caffeine is like a wonder drug where unless you have a profound anxiety or tachycardia that is triggered by caffeine, caffeine actually is shown to improve an ability to focus really without major side effects. There is an issue with caffeine in that the half-life of caffeine is about 9 to 11 hours. And so generally what I try to do is not have caffeine after I would say about 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. There is a small percentage of the population, I guess if I remember correctly, about 10% for whom caffeine does not affect at all. And so if you're one of those people, then well, it's not really going to affect you. But for the rest of us, you got to be mindful of when you have your uh, caffeine intake. And then th th there's the discussion about pharmacological drugs, right? There's a lot of people who I know start relying on pharmacological methods to improve focus. And I haven't tried that, honestly. Um, having a decent shutdown ritual at the end of the day, having a reasonable morning routine, getting seven to eight hours of sleep, sleeping at the same time in the morning and in the evening, going for a walk in the mornings, uh, get some fresh air in your lungs, get some fresh sunshine. And that does so much better than actually relying on uh, pharmaceutical uh, things to improve your focus. And this is the basic stuff. And I guess just getting the basic stuff right is ridiculously helpful. So in summary, the key to developing a growth mindset around focusing is to think of it as a skill that can be learned rather than something that you either have or you don't have. We need to make studying and working more enjoyable and energizing, just like playing a video game or hanging out with friends. We can do this by forming groups, creating inspiring atmospheres, and framing our mindset and tasks as adventures, and also to avoid the distractions that harm our focus, but work on enriching our lives and spending time with our loved ones. Finally, we need to take care of our physical and mental health by getting enough sleep, exercise, nutrition, and using ca caffeine and other tools responsibly. By following these steps, we can improve our ability to focus and achieve our goals with joy and fulfillment. With these principles in mind, you can achieve success and fulfillment in all areas of your life. Thank you for watching, and I wish you all the best in your journey towards a better future.